Well, as the sun sets behind Table Mountain, so it does on England's World Cup campaign, but South Africans can rest easy knowing that the tournament isn't over for them yet. Welcome to Centre Stage. I'm Melinda Farrell. Joining me here, as always, Lisa Stalaka. What a semi-final! <laughs> I know. We have been very lucky to have witnessed two great semi-finals. We were questioning whether the tournament, there was enough close games. Boy, they've saved, saved their best for last. And in some ways, a similar match to the first semi-final, just in the fact that Suna Elise, she won the toss, elected to bat first, and they put on a really decent score. Great start by the openers, Tasman Brits and Laura Woolvart, who really set the platform for them. Uh, but then England came and fought mm. back really well. And then the chase. I mean, England looked absolutely dead cert to get mm. there. In a similar way to when we saw Harman Preet mm, Kaur and Jimmy Rodrigues uh, cruising along. But a couple of overs in there. Ishmael, Kaka. It was just mm. incredible all round and a really tight finish. What did you take away from that apart from the unbelievable atmosphere. Yeah, we're lucky enough to be there and, and sit in the stand, so not in the commentary box. First things first, I mean, Laura Wolfart and Tasman Brits, I mean, that partnership was really crucial, uh, especially Tasman Brits, that's the best I've seen yeah. her play. Um, and she took it on, she took the game on. Like you said, England fought back, but then for Catherine Siver Brunt to go for 18 runs off the last over, it got South Africa to a total that they probably never would have expected to get against a quality England aside. Um, Sophie Eccleston was excellent as well at the back end. She picked up two wickets. Um, and then from an England perspective, you're right, they looked comfortable. But then as soon as Nat Siver Brunt got out, they lost, England lost five for 20. And that's what, this is what happens, scoreboard pressure in a semi-final knockout game, the crowd was electric. Every kind of single stop, wicket, they were up and about. Um, and you could see that it was building and building and building. And Ayabonga Kaka to come in and pick up three wickets and three runs in that over, just turned the momentum. And so did Nadine de Klerk. She was the one that got Nat Siver Brunt out. Uh, uh, you talk about uh, Tasman Brits having the best game mm. or the innings. What about the catch, four catches? And one of them, I reckon, was the catch of the tournament, diving. The ball yep. was past her and it was millimetres from yeah. the ground. Yeah, I mean, she's a wonderful athlete. Um, unfortunately, never got to the Olympics to throw javelin because of an accident. So we know that she's an athlete and she can move well. Um, but like I said, is she scored the runs. So off the back of that, anything that came her way, she was taking it. I was sitting down and I jumped out of my seat for that catch because that is what you train for. That is what you want to take those little hangers with your one-handed um, cliffhangers basically. And, and the celebration after was amazing. And uh, that obviously removed Alice Capsey who's been dangerous throughout this tournament. Did you take many of those? A couple. <laughs> more than a couple, a I couple. know, yeah. uh, more than a couple. So look, now we're here, England obviously disappointed in that they were bowing out or they're bowing out of the tournament mm. having looked like they were the best side apart from Australia. So who would you pick as your top player for the match? Oh, I think it's uh, hands down Tasman Brits, doesn't it? I mean, literally the ball followed her. And then the amount of runs that she scored, you know, really dominant. Um, let's hope for South Africa that that just spurs her on to have another game. They've got one more game to go. Um, but yeah, top performer, an absolute star today. Um, and I think she said in, in the post-match presentation, this is what your dreams, you know, you dream about being in this situation in front of a home crowd mm. to have a game like that, pretty special. It certainly is, and they've come so close in recent mm. ICC events as well and just not been able to get there, so a huge opportunity mm. for them. Who's your impact player? There are a couple to choose from. Yeah, I, I mean, Ayabonga Kaka picking up those three wickets, but I'm gonna go Shabnam Ismail, just because she goes so hard at the top, I think her figures before she came back on was maybe two for eight off two overs. Mm. And then she still got her two overs at the death and then bowls the last one, keeps her nerve. Um, so good in the field, like sprinting around, um, fires the ball in. She's an absolute weapon for South Africa. Yeah. Let's turn our attention ahead to Sunday, the final. There'll probably be a really good crowd there now. So that's obviously going to live mm -hmm. South Africa. But Australia in the way, mm. That is a monumental, bigger than that mountain to overcome. <laughs> How can South Africa surprise Australia or just, just 
discomfort them enough so that they give themselves the best chance of winning? Well, I, th I think the areas that South Africa can improve on from today's match, apart from Shabnam Ismail, I think probably at the start of the innings, they weren't great with their bowling, their lines and lengths. Mm -hmm. um, Marazan Cap took a little while to kind of get into it. Um, probably didn't have the best game with, with the ball. Um, they have an ability because of their bowlers to to put some pressure and have some impact early on in the power play. If they do that, you know, and if I, I think based on what we're seeing this, these two semi-finals, whoever wins the toss will bat first. It's a final, mm -hmm. runs on the board, um, and so it, if they're able to to bowl second, they could certainly put a bit of pressure on the Australian side. The other thing is that they've, they've got to soak it up. Um, you know. Today's match was really special, and I've been saying this as well, that it's a time to celebrate cricket as a whole, not just them as individuals making their first ever final, but what the collective have done to get them there. And that's past players, past administrators, the volunteers out there in, in, in club cricket land to, to give them their opportunity. Everyone's had an impact by so many different people. So remember those people. Mm. Remember that what they have done to get you to that stage. If they can do that, and if they can feed off the energy of Newlands, which was unbelievable, like, sorry guys, I cannot explain how good it was, um, then you never know what might happen. And the Australians will know that, um, but you, from an Australian perspective, you kind of feel that was their best game. Mm. Can they back it up again? It's a, a lot of emotion, a lot of emotion to get them into the final. Can they dig deep into their reserves? Yeah, both sides are, have had such tight semi-finals mm. to just get there. So that'll be interesting to see how they back up. Any changes for either side or do you expect them to go in with the same um, sides? I expect similar sides, um, unless there's a little niggle that's come out of this game. Um, the Australians look good. I think Jess Jonathan deserves to be back into the side. Um, just her experience, we, we saw that in, in the first semi-final. Um, and yeah, for South Africa, why would you change it? No, why would you? Don't change winning side. Correct. I guess the big question is, Luce, who's going to win? <laughs> yeah, look, I, I think Australia, given their experience and playing regularly in these crucial matches, and, and you talk about the emotion of getting through, Remember last T20 World Cup semi-final, Australia luckily to get onto the park and then get across South Africa. Like really a lot of emotion was spent there, but then they just soaked up the atmosphere. I think they'll enjoy playing in front of the big crowd. Mm. They'll absolutely lap it up. So given their experience, their depth, I think Australia will, will come across the line. It's, it's almost impossible to sort of say that they won't win or predict that they won't win. But I guess, look, Cricket's a funny game. Cricket's a funny game. And uh, uh, undoubtedly, look, if you're watching this and you're in Cape Town, get yourself down there to Newlands on Sunday. Come and say, we'll come and say hello even. Okay, won't we? Oh, okay, sure. Sure, okay, we'll come and say hello. And uh, whatever you do, make sure you stay up to date with everything that's happening here in Cape Town on Crick Buzz. We'll be back with the big centre stage from the centre stage of this incredibly wonderful tournament. So we will see you, and next time we see you, we're going to know who are the World Cup champions.